where there are concerns, obviously, since it's a new system, uh, liquid democracy, and and um, I, th I think the biggest concern at this point is is uh, security. Uh, somebody has to be in charge of this system, and, and can we trust those people? Uh, and that's a valid concern, I think, and something that has to be uh, solved. Uh, before it can be used on a, on a big scale, so to speak. Uh, we are looking at different solutions. Uh, we are, uh, we have, I, I can't talk about the technical details of the system because I, I don't have that, that competence or, or knowledge, but uh, it has to do with cryptography and the checksums for those people that know that, what that is and also transparency and the verifiability that, that every citizen is able to go into the system. We do have a live system, uh, just to mention it. That's working in some senses, but it's missing some parts. But every citizen is, is able to uh, enter the system, check that their vote has been counted, and check that their vote has been counted properly and verify the, the voting results uh, of, of the vote. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest concern I see right now, that is the security. It's, it's hard to summarize quickly, but uh, I think the biggest strengths, if I are to mention a few, I've taken a few notes, uh, are uh, that we make use of our collective intelligence, meaning that uh, today there are a lot of people who have who have who are really knowledgeable about things, but uh, might not get the possibility to to be heard because of the political system the way it is. Uh, in Sweden, it's 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 very hard to uh, bring forth motions from the people or bills, suggestions from the people. Uh, even even. Uh, referendums and, and, and national votes in specific topics like being a member of the EU or, or other things. Right now in my hometown where I live, um, there's going to be a vote uh, on, uh, on a tax issue uh, regarding cars uh, and the political leadership uh, doesn't like that because they've already made a decision that this is the way we're supposed to act and, and we've, if we have a vote about it, uh, that decision might be changed, and obviously all the work has gone into that. But if you can, if you can have a dialogue before you make a decision, and you can have uh, an opinion about the decision once it's been made, when are you supposed to have an opinion about it? Uh, so that's that's uh, that's a little that's kind of my thinking uh, about the collective intelligence part. Uh, I believe strongly that in dialogue new ideas are born since the old ideas are questioned and new, new solutions to the old ideas are found. So that's the collective intelligence part. Obviously, it's also very easy to participate in electronic uh, direct democracy uh, for those to have access to it and are, you know, know how to log in, etc., etc. But there are solutions to uh, low-tech uh, solutions to that as well. Also, it's very easy to um, create a dialogue uh, in, in a way that's, you know, normally you will have to go to a physical place somewhere and meet with people that all also come to this place and start a dialogue there, but if you do it online in some way or another, you can talk with a lot of people at once uh, and, and uh, that way it's much, much easier to come up with new ideas. I think the biggest thing obviously is that it would give people influence over their everyday life, which in my mind they do not have right now. And when people do get influence over their, their uh, life, uh, their sense of responsibility grows um, and, and they participate more. Uh, that's my opinion. Well, there are a lot of political problems, obviously, uh, globally and locally. Uh, personally, I'm more concerned at this point about uh, the local problems. Uh, hopefully, it can, you know, direct democracy can grow. Uh, globally, there are a lot of problems: uh, environmental, political, financial, uh, corruption. Uh, 
And now that we have a tool that we've never had before in history, in the internet, and a tool where we can inform ourselves, we can have debates, and we can participate in a way we've never been able to do before. And I think the time, coupled with the dissatisfaction of, 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 of how politics work today, and opens up for the possibility of, of electronic direct democracy in, in, in some form. Uh, and the technology, as we've discussed, is, is available. Maybe it needs to be published, but it is definitely available. We give away our, our power um, locally to the national leaders. And in, in my case, Sweden, uh, the power has been transferred to uh, Brussels. Uh, the center of, of uh, the European Union. So, uh, and since everything today is intertwined, uh, when I was looking at different options of, 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 of uh, getting involved politically, uh, I was looking at, at all possibilities, well, maybe not all possibilities, but a lot of possibilities. And, and I tried to ask myself and answer as truthfully as I could, uh, if, if a particular idea was possible to, to accomplish at this point in time, uh, are we ready to go from point A to point B, or are we ready to go from point A to point Z? Uh, and I think that liquid democracy is a big step, obviously, but it is definitely not utopian, at least not in my mind. Uh, but at this point, I'm, I'm focusing locally entirely because it has to start somewhere and be able to grow from there. And aiming too high, uh, I think, would be counterproductive at, at this point. So I'm not really concerned about the global aspect right now. However, I do realize that if it were to grow, uh, then it will reach global levels and it could be implemented globally very easily. Well, let me start with my opinion of what democracy is, obviously my personal opinion. Uh, democracy originally is a Greek word, uh, and directly translated, uh, it means people power or, or people rule. Uh, so, in my mind, the word democracy, coupled with other words, weakens the original term, the original meaning as a representative democracy, uh, in, in, in a, which, which some of us call in, indirect democracy, which means that you go and vote and you, you make a, a very, very important decision because that decision is going to last for at least four years, or four years, uh, at least in Sweden. Uh, that's how often we have national elections. Uh, and if you make the wrong decision, or it turns out that the choice that you made uh, was wrong, and the, the people in charge are not doing a good job, they can obviously be, be replaced, or there can be a new election if, if things go really bad, but uh, that doesn't happen very often. But generally, you will have to wait four years, uh, and, and that's a very long time. Uh, in active democracy, our, our current slogan, because we, we vote about everything, uh, and it's very transparent, it's on the web for anyone who, who wants to look at the results. Uh, the, the slogan of our party right now is, is uh, democracy between the elections, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, uh, to me, democracy, people power, is one vote in every topic. It's really that simple to me. So representative democracy and other forms of democracy, in my mind, are not true democracies. They are indirect democracies.